Today we're going to have a look at setting up click events within Polybar. Now one thing you have to keep in mind is unlike a lot of other bars like Yabba, Lemon Bar or even i3 status, there is a severe limitation on what you can actually do with Polybar through the scripting interface. I have no idea why this limitation is here but I haven't found a way to get around it without using external tools. I'll talk a bit more about that when we actually get to it, but before we do that let's actually have a look at what I mean by a click event. So this is my desktop here and as you can see up here I've got my polybar. Now if I were to click on this text here, as you'll see it'll actually make a notification. Or if I click on my volume module here, it'll open up my volume program. Or if I scroll on this here, it'll change my volume level. Now I would say for me there are three categories of click events that I use. Now you can probably define the categories however you want, but this is how I'm going to define them. So firstly we've got modules that you click and they open up some sort of program you want to use independent of the bar. So that would be something like opening up my sound interface here. The other one that we've got is you click on a module and it creates some sort of notification to give you some bit of information. That would be this here or a bit more useful would be something like this here which shows my crypto prices. Or also this one right here which will show the torrents that I currently have available. And the other thing I like to do is run some sort of script in the background to do something like say change my volume level. Now there's a bunch of other stuff you can do with your bar but those are the three categories that the things that I do fall into. Now before we get to actually looking at how to define them, there are two ways we can define click events within Polybar. The first one is using the interface that was designed for Polybar so that's doing it through the variables in each of your modules. And the other method is you can do it through lemon bar action handlers. The lemon bar action handlers are a bit more powerful because they let you define more clickable areas, but they're still not as powerful as I would like them to be. So let's just go over to my polybar config and actually see how this would work. Now I'm going to assume you already have polybar installed and you already know where your polybar config is. So I'm not going to go over that today. I would assume that if you don't, you probably have more important things to learn about polybar than how to do click events. We're going to be having a look at two modules that I defined earlier. We've got the subs module here and we've got the test module. The subs module is this module here which shows my YouTube subscribers and the test module basically is just a test one I made to test out the lemon bar tags. Now we're going to go over the subs module first just because that's the variable method. As you can see in here I've got a click left and I've got a click right. The rest of this stuff isn't too important. You can define this as an IPC you can do exec or exec if, you can do an interval of zero, you can do an interval of a thousand. The rest of this stuff doesn't matter. The only thing we care about are these two lines right here. Just keep that in mind. The rest of the stuff is just boilerplate to get the module working. So as you can see, I've got a click left and a click right. There's also a click middle, a scroll up, a scroll down, a double click middle, a double click left, and a double click right. For the double click events, the way those would be written would be double, click and then left, right or middle. We're going to do left right now and what we're going to be doing is opening up my terminal. Now you could just write it like this. There's an issue with what we're doing here though. So if you just open up the terminal or you open up any sort of program that isn't just going to end really quickly like just a little script, what's going to happen is your polybar is actually going to freeze until that program closes. So let's just actually run it like this and see what will actually happen. So as we can see, that was on my subs one. And if we just double click left, as you can see, it's opened up my terminal. But if we just look at the clock up here, as you'll notice, nothing's actually happening. And let's say we click on one of the other modules. None of these other modules are going to work right now. And that's because the polybar is actually frozen because we've got this program open here. As soon as we close this though, everything will start working as we would expect. So what we have to do instead is make sure that we fork the process into the background. And the way we do that is just with an ampersand. So we save this, reload it again, and give it a second to load up my polybar. And double click on this one. Now as you can see, if we click on here, this is all still working, but we can still open up extra stuff and nothing is freezing. So open more of these up. And as you can see, the notifications are still working as you would expect. So make sure, even if it's just a little script, fork everything into the background. Even if the script takes half a second to run. Fork everything into the background just as your default behavior. It'll save you some trouble later. One thing to keep in mind with the double click events is that they may not work perfectly. Especially if you click an update happens and then you click again. 
So I would recommend just sticking to the single click events unless you really, really need something else. If you need some extra ones, I would recommend just using scroll before you use the double click. Just because double click can be a problem. I haven't run into any problems myself. But in the documentation, it does mention that they may not work under all circumstances. Another thing you might want to do is have your module get updated when you click on it. In Polybar, this isn't as simple as doing something like just changing this from opening up a program to just running echo and, I don't know, just outputting test. In Polybar, this isn't actually going to work. So if we just refresh the bar and we click on this up here, as you can see, nothing actually changes because what gets evaluated in this command right here doesn't actually affect the bar, but there is a way you can do it. So what you'd have to do instead is set up the module as an IPC module because as you see up here, when I scroll on this module, it actually does change it. Now I've done a separate video on IPC. What I'm basically doing here is every time I scroll up, it's modifying my volume level. And then every time the volume level changes, basically it sends a signal to the polybar to say, hey, go update this bar. So unlike other bars, you do have to do a little bit of extra work to modify the bar with your click events. It can be done, and if you want to do it, it's not super difficult to do. Just go have a look into how IPC works. So let's just change this back over. And I don't think there's much of a point to go over these scroll events. They work basically the same way. Instead of clicking on it, you just scroll, and every single instance of a scroll, it'll run the command. So if you wanted to change your volume level, if you wanted to open up a program, every single click of the scroll, basically that counts as a, another click event that fires. One thing I failed to mention earlier was you actually can define click events on the bar itself. So basically the bar is defined as anywhere that there isn't a module. So this module goes to roughly here, and then obviously there's all of this blank space in here, and then any of these gaps between the modules, that's also counted as the bar. So let's take this event right here and just move it into the bar section. So that'll be this right here. As you can see up here, bar slash bar, this is my bar section here. So I'm going to switch this over from being a double click event because I actually had some trouble with this a little bit earlier. I'll talk about that in just a moment. But if we restart the bar and let's just click on any of this empty space in here. As you can see, it'll open up a terminal, click it again. It'll open up another terminal, click again, terminal. It'll keep going as you'd expect. Now, the reason why I didn't want to do a double click event is because you have to do the double click quick enough for it to be counted as a double click and not a single click. Now, I don't know what the threshold for that is, but it seems to be pretty tight. So it has to be pretty much instantaneous that you do the double click. Otherwise, it'll be counted as a single click. So keep that in mind that the double click isn't the most simple thing to use. And because there isn't a way to define the speed of the double click, it is a little bit annoying to use from time to time. Now the typical use case for clicking, or I guess scrolling on the poly bar, is for moving between each of your different desktops. So built into poly bar, there is a function for i3 and BSPWM called BSPWM or i3, I guess, dash desk next. So that'll be something like this. Scroll dash up for the scroll event equals BSPWM, or if you're on i3, you'd put in i3 dash desk next and what this will let you do is basically scroll anywhere on the bar and then move to your next desktop you can also do the prev equivalent if you want to go in the other direction so we can just scroll anywhere on here and it'll go to the next desktop i have noticed a slight issue with this though if i have this set up and i have scrolling on another module sometimes there you go as you can see if i scroll between the updates it might move to the next desktop which is a little bit annoying and I haven't really found a way to avoid that actually happening. So I prefer to have this function just on the actual module here as opposed to being on the entire bar. But if you want it on the entire bar, then you can do that yourself. That covers pretty much everything available for the polybar method, but let's have a look at the lemon bar method now. Now what I've done in here, like with the first one, this right here and this right here is just boilerplate. We don't need to care about it. The only line we need to care about is this exec right here. So I've done this directly in the polybar, but you can do this from a script as well. It's just a bit easier to read if I echo it out right here. So what we've done is we have this tag right here, and then we have the closing tag. And then in between those two tags, we've got this text defined in here. Now this text is defined as being clickable on my left mouse. Now the way we know it's clickable on our left mouse is because 
we've defined an action handler. So an action handler is defined like this. So we need to start it with a percentage sign and a curly brace. And the first thing we have in there is A. A means that this is going to be an action handler. Now this number here, this number defines which mouse button we're going to be using. If you want to see what number is assigned to which mouse button, we've got a list of stuff right here. So one is left click, two is middle, three is right, four is scroll up, five is scroll down, six, double left, seven, double middle, eight, double right. Once again, double click actions may not work super reliably. So if I was to put, say, three in there, that would then change this from being a left click to being a right click. Now what we need after that is a colon, and after the colon we can actually put our command in there. In this case I'm just doing notify send, and then sending the words hello and world. You can open up a program, you can change your volume level, you can do anything like that. I'm just doing this basic example here though. And then what you need to do is end it with a colon, and then after the colon have a curly brace. Then after that you can actually define your clickable text, and the closing tag is just percentage sign, curly brace, a curly brace. Now the reason why this is really useful is because what we can do here is we don't just have to define one of them. What we can do is we can actually make multiple in the same module. And this gets really cool. So we've got this clickable text here and this clickable text here. Let's actually change what they do. This one can send out, I don't know, hi world instead of hello world. And what you're going to see now is if I click on this section here, it's going to send hello world. If I click on this section here, it's going to say hi world. It's doing it on the same button, but it's doing different actions because the different sections of text are actually defined as a different click event. The reason this is cool is because you can do things like say, I don't know, let's say you want to have a dash here and you want to have another dash here. And I'm just going to make a couple more of these off camera. Okay, so as you can see up here, I've got a bunch of dashes. Now, what are the dashes? Well, you could define this as, say, a way to do your sound level, for example. So if you click on any of these different sections, it's going to run a different command. Now, obviously, I haven't set it up to run a different command, but you could do it so the first one is for 10% volume, second is 20, 30, 40, so on and so forth. Or you could do a bunch of other stuff like that. I don't really have any examples off the top of my head. The volume example is just the first one that came to my mind. And the reason why you'd have to do a volume module like that as opposed to doing, it, say, on the coordinates you click on is for the reason why I said that polybar modules are very limited. So in polybar through the scripting interface, I haven't found a way to actually get the coordinates that you actually click on when you're working within a script. Now I know in things like i3 status, yabar, lemon bar, you actually can get the coordinates that you click on and it just makes working with modules way easier. But within polybar, there doesn't seem to be a way to get that through the scripting interface. Now I know there are ways to get this when you're writing in like C++. There's actually an interface to get it because I believe the built-in volume module actually does take advantage of your actual click location. But I haven't found a way to do it through the scripting interface. Now that isn't to say that it's impossible to get your click location. You just have to do it through third-party tools like XDO tool or other things like that. I would like to see a way to do this within Polybar and it may be there. But I've checked the documentation, I haven't run across it, so if someone knows about a way to do that, feel free to let me know down below and I'll talk about it in a separate video. One other thing you can do through the lemon bar method is actually do nested click handlers. Now, I don't really know the point of a nested click handler. Basically what it's going to do is just make it a bit harder to debug. Because what's going to happen is this event in here, it's going to be defined to one click and this event out here is going to be defined to another click. Whereas what you could do is just define this as a clickable text and this as a clickable text and it will give you the exact same behavior. Because what's going to happen when you define them on the same button is only the most inner click is actually going to work. So I would avoid the nested action handlers but if you want to do them for whatever reason then it is something you can do. So that should be a pretty good rundown on everything you can do with Polybar. Now I'm pretty sure I didn't miss anything, feel free to let me know if I did. But I'm pretty sure I've covered basically everything to do with click handling in Polybar. So let me know what your thoughts are on click handlers down below. Do you actually use them in your Polybar or do you just do everything through key bindings? Typically I'll do stuff through key bindings myself, but if my cursor just happens to be at the top of the screen, well sometimes it's just going to be a little bit easier to just click on the module instead of trying to remember what my key binding is. So for me, I like to define the event and if I use them, I use them. If I don't, I don't. 
But maybe you're not like me and you only want to do key bindings or you only want to do stuff in your status bar, let me know down below. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, Gabriel, Peter Lee, Road, Tony, Donald, Oku, Larry, and Zilva. And a special thank you to Gabriel for being my newest patron. So if you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to my Patreon down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links where you can buy the gear I use in this channel, or anything else you want to get a small kickback for it. Also remember to go check out my podcast, that is Tech of a T, available on Library and YouTube for the video version, and anywhere you listen to the podcast for the audio version. This channel as well is available on Library and BitTube, so feel free to go check out that over there as well. And also remember to go smash the like button and leave me a comment down below, and also remember to subscribe and ding the bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and... I'm out.